games new to me. Please like and subscribe. Hey guys, Rob here for Games New To Me. So good to have you back and thank you for joining me for the next few minutes. I appreciate the hell out of you guys, so let's waste no time and get right into today's story. Oh, I am so of two minds in today's story. On the one hand, it's kind of terrifying, and on the other hand, it's kind of exciting and cool. Ah, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So what am I talking about? Well... I'm talking about the Nintendo NX, now officially known as the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo finally dropped the news and video a few days ago, and I've been putting off making this video because I wanted to see what would develop, and there's a lot to talk about, frankly. First and foremost, the rumors were true. I even talked about this in a previous video. The Nintendo Switch is a hybrid gaming device. I don't know whether to call it a console or a portable gaming system because it's kind of both and it's kind of neither, but because I think it'll primarily be used at home, on the big screen, in the living room, I'm going to refer to it as a console. I wish I could show you guys clips in this video, but Nintendo is a bit crazy when it comes to copyright claims on anything and everything, so just like Rich of Review Tech USA, I'm going to have to rely on stills from the video. It's just not worth arguing fair use with Nintendo because they don't care. And I'm not a big enough channel to fight them on any of this. It's okay, we'll get around the obstacles and get to the meat and bones of this story. So how does the Nintendo Switch work? Well, it's an interesting device in that, as has been rumored and stated already, it is a hybrid gaming console. But what does that mean? Essentially, the nuts and bolts part of this console is a portable device which attaches to a sort of docking station for when you want to do your gaming in the living room and not on the go. The docking station sits somewhere in your home entertainment shelf and is permanently connected to the television through an HDMI cable, I would assume. The actual gaming part slides into this docking station and at this point it functions like a typical console that we're all pretty much familiar with by now. Now the portability of it comes into play when you slide the bulk unit out of the docking station. It has its own screen and some very nifty controllers that are attached on either side but very sleekly slide out of the mobile unit so you can set it down on a table or wherever you happen to be and play Nintendo games wherever and whenever you want. Just don't get caught if you're playing it at school or at work. The release date for the Switch has been revealed to launch in March of 2017 and a price point has yet to be set. And oh my god, the price point is a whole other piece of drama due to the expected processing power of the Nintendo Switch, which is somewhere around the basic Xbox One or just slightly below those specifications. It is still unknown what all is going to be in the Nintendo Switch as Nintendo hasn't released that information yet. I really don't want to get into what experts in the field are saying about a price point for the Switch except to say that if the specifications are as expected, meaning slightly below an Xbox One, then the price should reflect that and not be above, say, $300 and maybe even better priced at $250. What you absolutely should know is that there is no backwards compatibility with any of Nintendo's previous consoles or handheld devices. It seems pretty obvious that the Switch wouldn't be backwards compatible with previous home consoles as those read game media via a disc while the Switch is entirely cartridge based. So you can't really do backwards compatibility in that case. No, the Switch also is not backwards compatible with Nintendo's previous lines of handheld gaming devices even though they too are cartridge based systems. So let's look at the plus side. On the plus side of things, Nintendo has created a very interesting gaming system as its next generation console. Their official announcement video certainly was well received and there is a lot of buzz about the system which is great news for Nintendo. Their reveal video also showed that the Switch will have some pretty big third-party support, so there will be some AAA non-Nintendo game titles available for the system. This is a major plus for Nintendo as it's something that was sorely needed in previous versions. Now some of the bad, and I'm gleaming over a lot of both the positives and the negatives. I'll say that it certainly is not a Nintendo Wii U situation, where consumers weren't even aware that a Nintendo had created another generation system. It took a while for the consumer to become aware of the Nintendo Wii U, so initial sales were absolutely abysmal. Sales didn't really skyrocket at any given point because the Wii U was underpowered compared to its peers and had very few third-party games available for it. 
Nintendo had to rely on its own catalog of intellectual properties and even create a few new ones to draw in customers and drive sales. Once again, the games were generally well received and are fun to play, but the system ended up being a must-have for die-hard Nintendo fans only and the casual gamer was blissfully unaware. Why am I talking about the Wii U? I'm talking about it because that console reflects some of the same shortcomings the Nintendo Switch is going to suffer from. More specifically, the system will be perceived to be underpowered if suspicions and rumors are true. Nintendo would have to be out of their minds to try and push the Switch at $400 price point. Because at that point, they would be asking roughly the same amount of money as Sony wants for their infinitely more powerful PlayStation Pro. An underpowered device set at the same price point as the vastly more powerful PS4 Pro is a recipe for disaster and after the debacle that was the Nintendo Wii U, Nintendo needs to make these systems fly off the shelves in retail stores and online. What is actually under the proverbial hood of the Switch is going to heavily dictate its price point. I'm going to go along with the industry experts who claim that the unit will sell from anywhere between $250 and $300. I admit that it's exciting to finally see what the Nintendo Switch is all about. It's a bold move by the company and it has generated a ton of buzz. So I'm excited about what I've seen so far, but very conservatively. I'm also very worried about the Nintendo Switch's future. My concerns are as follows. 1. Which consumer group is this unit going to be marketed to because I'm not sure who will buy this. Think about it. It's an allegedly underpowered console hybrid as compared to its contemporaries. Sony knows who their customers are and have been doing a brilliant job selling the PS4 to those customers. Sony has developed brand loyalty which is something that the Nintendo severely damaged in regards to their own brand due to the fiasco that was the Wii U. Number 2. Why would anyone buy the Nintendo Switch based on its portability? It's considerably bigger and bulkier than even the largest smartphone. If you're traveling with just a carry-on bag, the Nintendo Twitch is not going to sound all that appealing when space in your bag is at a premium. Number 3. Are kids the consumer group that this is targeted at? If so, I wish Nintendo would recognize that kids carry smartphones too. Think of all the apps that you can run on your smartphone. Games included in a neat ultra portable form that fits in a pocket. The Nintendo Switch is not going to be nearly as portable. I just don't understand who the target audience for the Switch actually is. And I'm not sure Nintendo does either. Then there's the question of whether the Switch is a gimmick console that Nintendo is trying to convince us we need to have. If that's the case, it wouldn't be the first time. Remember how everyone was going nuts for the original Nintendo Wii? Remember how quickly sales dropped after its release? Yeah, the Wii is a perfect example of a gimmick console. And there is already controversy surrounding Nintendo's big reveal and it comes in the form of gameplay footage on the Switch being shown of AAA titles, yet the studios who made those games haven't announced or buttoned down everything as far as they're dealing with Nintendo. Both studios just said that they are excited about having some sort of agreement with Nintendo but declined to comment about whether the games in question would actually be licensed to Nintendo. I want to make it clear and I want to say that I fully expect both titles to actually be available on the Switch, but just imagine the anger and outrage that would take place if people bought the Switch to play NBA games which may not be available at launch, but since they were in the trailer they'll obviously be available sooner or later, only to learn after the fact that no, the deal had not been ironed out and somehow the deal fell through, resulting in those titles not being available for the Nintendo Switch. Just think about that for a second. Can you imagine the backlash? As I said, I fully expect that Nintendo wouldn't have shown gameplay of those games on the Switch if they weren't pretty certain that everything was in the bag for them. Still, it's one of those things that could bite them in the end. Look, I want Nintendo Switch to do well. I want Nintendo to be a player once again in the console wars. If it wasn't for Nintendo, 
Who knows what the world of video games would look like today? It was Nintendo that saved the video game industry after it completely tanked in the early 80s due to plenty of issues from companies such as Atari and others releasing terrible quality games and losing the trust of the consumer. Nintendo was the company to introduce a quote toy as it was marketed at the time, the Nintendo Entertainment System that caught the imagination of tons of kids and later their parents and brought video gaming back from the brink of extinction. So yeah, I want Nintendo to do well. The NES was my first real gaming console, followed by the Super Nintendo and so on and so on. The Switch is an interesting idea. I just question the desired market that it's aimed for. And the lack of horsepower the unit is rumored to have worries me even more because this could go very bad for them, especially if they ask an unreasonable initial price for the system. Here's the thing, you only get one chance per console to make a first impression. And while so far everything is mostly going smoothly, I have some concerns about the actual release. I just don't know. So let me put the question to you guys. What do you think of the Nintendo Switch and all the available info about it so far? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. To my subscribers, a million thank yous. You guys drive me to keep upping my game for you. It's an amazing feeling that I am able to entertain as well as inform you. It's frankly humbling and an incredible amazing feeling to me. If you just stumbled across this video, this channel, or me, won't you click that subscribe button? You'd be helping to grow this amazing community, you'd have my sincere gratitude, and best of all, you'll always be notified whenever a new video goes up on the channel. Come on, click the subscribe button, give me a chance to win you over in the long run. This is Rob for Games New To Me saying, Nintendo, I've got my fingers crossed for you. Until next time, be good to each other. And I'll catch you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.